appreciate your effort for making it. I appreciate your effort for coming to the house of God for two hours once a week to give your to give your time and, and your sacrifice to bring your petitions and your wants. You know, Bishop is still out. He wanted to be here today. He wanted to be here today. But because of his leg and because of he's immobile and he, and he gets tired fast and, and he can't come up and down the stairs, he says, you know, I'm going to have to miss another Sunday, but I really want to be there. And I think about not who wants to be here, but who should be here, who, who could be here and who ain't here. You know what? Something I want to tell you, you better want God before you need God. Oh, okay, I can stop right there, right? You better want God before you need God. Let me tell you something. You know what? And I'm just getting off the beaten path here for a quick second, but this is for somebody. You, you know, it's just what, let me tell you something. When, when your babies are sick and you don't know what's wrong, you need God. When, when, you know what? When, when, when your marriage is in trouble, you need God. But when the bills are, are, are piling up and there's not enough money, there's not, it's all about money, church. It's all about money. I need money to get here for gas. I need money for my electricity. We need money for rent. We need money for food. And now Mother's Day, even Hallmark is, is, is raising the prices on, on Mother's Day cards. Come on, Hallmark. It would get a good one for 50 cents, man. But when you develop a relationship and you begin to say, you know what, That's, I, want, I want to be there. I need to be there. I have to be there. So my point is, is you know, uh, Bishop and, and Pastor, Mr., uh, Pastor Amy wanted to be here and they, and they couldn't be here. This is the first Sunday that my mom has been on Mother's Day. I don't know how often Mother's Day falls on a Sunday. It's every Sunday of the year. But she, she, she didn't make it. And this was my time here to be here with her and, and, and minister and, and share these moments. And, and she couldn't make it. So if you're able to get to church, even if it ain't this church, I strongly suggest you get to church until you're laid up in a bed and say, you know what, I wish I could go to church. I wish my legs were strong enough to carry me to church. I wish I had a vehicle to drive me to church. I wish I had the health to get to church. I wish I had a friend that could pick me up and get me to church. I wish I had a way. I wish I had an opportunity because there was a time when I had it and I didn't use it. Somebody say amen. Get to church. Listen, mothers, do you know that the average mother spends over 3,000 hours a year with her children? The average mother spends over 3,000 hours uh, uh, a year with their children. Could you imagine, mommies, if you were getting paid by the hour? You, you'd be over the top. I'd have more kids, just like you pay more. Come out of retirement, man, have more babies. But the average child only spends 40 hours a year in church. But the average child only spends 40 hours a week, a month, I mean a year, <laughs> in church. Imagine spending 40 hours a month in church, 40 hours a week in church. Amen. All I ask is two a week. So mothers, I need your help. Mothers, I need your help to work with me to get your babies into church. To get your babies into a place that they can have a solid rock foundation. Where no matter what happens, they can call on the name of God. Every time I was in trouble, every time something came up, I always referred myself to a moment that I had had in church. When I was scared, and I, they, they said, I remember the first time that I went to jail, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't release me. They said the bond, it was a Friday night. They said the bondsman will not be available until Monday. You have to stay for the weekend. And I began to say, I have decided to follow Jesus. Right, right. What do you mean I have to stay here overnight? I've never been away like this before. I've never been in a in a jail where I don't want to be. I want to go home. I have to follow Jesus. There I am. No one go with me. Still I will follow. Because a parent, because my mother and my father made me come to church. And 
And when I was in my most desperate moments is when I recall being in church. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Let's, let's read a story and then I'll dismiss you this afternoon. I know uh, you all want to go and share and talk with your mamas. And I want to just take a moment too, before I get into my sermon, to just, just um, encourage anybody that has lost their mother. I, I encourage you today. I thank you for your strength. I don't know what that feels like. I can't imagine what that must be like. But yet, somehow, every day, you manage to get up and get ready. You manage to get up and put your best foot forward. You manage to continue to encourage other people. You don't ball up uh, into the fetal position and stand in the corner and wait in the corner and cry, woe is me, but you get up and you set an example to your babies and you make them strong because one day God is going to call you home and you need to make sure that they are going to be all right just like you have been all right. The most courageous people in the world to me is somebody that can go to a funeral of a child or a funeral of a parent and still function. You're stronger than life. You're stronger than I am. You're, you're amazing. And one day I'm going to need your counsel when God decides to call my parents home or if God decides to call one of my children home. I'll need you to sit down with me and say, this is how I made it. This is the prayer I prayed to get through it. These were the dark moments of my life, but God still shed some light on, on me so that I can make it. You know, if you lost your mother, you know, she's still listening to you. you. You can still feel her arms around you. You can still recall the advice she gave you. You can still feel the, the warmth of her kisses. You can still feel uh, the, the way that she would brighten up her room. And just like a uh, uh, senior pastor Steve got up here and says, he says, you know what? He says, if you're faithful, you'll be reunited again with her. Stay faithful. If not for your sake. Do it for your mom. Can you say amen? 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 through 37. I just want to read a little story to you from the Bible about a mother who just impressed me. I was going to talk about Eve, the first mother. I was going to talk about Mary, Christ's mother. And I, and I had this thing together. And two nights ago, God said, read this story. And I want to show you something. And I read the story. And, and, and I said, you know what? That's what I'm going to say. That's what I want to preach on Sunday. I want to apologize again for, for the, the, the system and the sound and the music and, uh, uh, you know, they got a new system in. And this, this kind of stuff drives me berserk. But you know what it is? It's change. Nobody likes change. I don't like change. I like dollar bills. I mean, I like change. Change is hard. So they're changing. They're upgrading. They're bringing it up. And they're trying and we're adjusting. And, 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 and I applaud uh, Brother Alfonso and, and Sister Grace for coming up and leading and, and working in these circumstances. Thank you very much. We put all the odds against them and gave them a microphone and said, do your best. Thank you. Yes, give them a hand clap. Hallelujah. So I thank you and I applaud you. It's, I couldn't do it yet just make it happen. First thing. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to the Shuman where there was a noble woman and, and she persuaded him to eat some food, so it was. As often as he passed by, he would turn into there and eat some food. This, this, this lady had saw the man of God coming and, and he would come to there where they were and he would preach at different occasions and he, she convinced him to come in and, and eat with her and her family. Verse 9 says, and she said to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes us regularly. She says, please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. So it will be whatever he comes to, whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. Now, I don't got time to go into the table, the chair and the lampstand. That's a whole nother sermon. Anytime the Bible begins to give you descriptive words, you must perk up and pay attention because God, in his wonderful writings, doesn't always give us uh, details. He doesn't tell us the names or, or, or the places or, or, or he doesn't tell us what time it was or what day of the week it was all the time. Sometimes he just gives us a vague story. But anyway, a side note, when God begins to give you descriptive words, uh, pay attention. 
and, and dig deeper to see what it means. Verse 11, and it happened one day that he came there and he turned uh, into the upper room and laid down there. He went to a house and he stood there. Then he said to uh, Gehazi, well, Gehazi, Gehazi, his servant, call the Shumanite woman when he had called to her. She stood before him. And he said to him, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, what then is it to be done for her? And Jehazi answered, actually she has no son and her husband is old. So he said, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. And then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maid servant. She was such a blessing to the man of God. She was such a blessing to his needs, putting somebody's needs in front of her that he was compelled. He was compelled to bless her. Something inside of him said, you know what, I'm not going to leave without giving you something. I'm not going to leave without doing something extra special just for you. Because you went out of your way. And let me tell you something. Did you ever get a chance to get a man of God on your side? Get him on your side. And he says, what do you want? And, 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 and it was, it, it was uh, Elijah's servant that says, you know what? I noticed that she didn't have a son. Now, you've got to understand the importance of having a son in this era of time. It was everything. And he says, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to give you a son. And the first thing she says is, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look, dude, don't, don't lie to me. That is so big. That is so great. That is so impossible. That is so over the top that I'm not even willing to, to, I'm not even willing to entertain the thought that it might actually happen because if it don't happen, it's going to be so disappointing. It's going to be so hard. I'm going to be let down so bad that I, all I got to say to you is don't lie to me. Has God ever told you something that was so big, so great, so mighty that you shrug your shoulders and say, ah, it's a lie. First of all, babies, we've been lied to so much that sometimes we don't even know what the truth is. We have to seek extra hard to figure out and to find out and to discover what the truth is because we've been lied to so much. It's what you don't understand is that God says, I am not a man that I should lie. So he says, whatever I say is the truth. So he tells her, I'm going to give you a son. And she says, that's so big, that's so amazing, that's so great that I'm, I'm afraid it might not come to pass. So please, don't lie to me. About this time next year, you shall embrace the son. No, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your main servant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elisha had told her. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to be with his father to the reapers. And he said to his father, my head, my head. So he said to his servant, carry him to his mother. Doesn't that sound like a dad? Every time the kids get hurt, they, they send him to the mom. You fell down, you're crying, go get your mom. Where's your mom at? Why was your mom watching you? Is your mom even here? Every time the kids get hurt, just run to your mom. It's like, mamas know what to do. You know, yesterday, Pastor Missy made, made baked chicken uh, uh, baked potatoes and, and some barbecue sauce on the baked chicken. You know, who, who told her how long to put the chicken in the oven and at what temperature? Who told her that? I've, I'm 38 years old. I have no clue. You give me a raw chicken, we're having raw chicken for dinner. I don't know how to put it in the I don't know what temperature. It might be too long or too soon. And I heard if you don't cook chicken right, you get really sick. Right? But, but moms know these things. They know.